Runk. <laughs> I got canceled. My son has cried every single day for three years. And it's crazy because over the last three years, I've cried every single day for different reasons. You know, he's like, I'm hungry. I'm like, I want my fucking career back, asshole. <laughs> Doing all this therapy, she said to me, well, that's no surprise you're a comedian. And I said, what do you mean? I know you think you like to do stand up because you like to make people laugh. When people laugh, that means that they accept you. And you need that. And that's when I was like, you're a fucking bitch. <laughs> I'm just a guy and I'm just trying to do better, okay? They don't want you to change, that's the truth. I got back on stage and people were just like, what the, are you, oh, but I typed so fucking hard. <laughs> Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. All right? My special, Grow or Die, my fifth special, is available for pre-order now until midnight. It is available now, crystalia.com. I have self-released this uh, in the gangster way. I put it out there, and you are able to purchase it now, pre-order, at a certain price. It's $8. And then at midnight, the special comes out. When the special comes out on crystalia.com, it will be available for a little bit of a higher price. So you are able to get it now for uh, <clears throat> less. So go to crystalia.com and go get the special, Grow or Die. It is the thing I am most proud of uh, in my career, this special, above any other special uh, I don't, I, I honestly, it was the hardest thing I've done and I am more proud of it than I am of any other work that I've ever done. So go support. <clears throat> I put this out on my own, crystalia.com, and I'm so excited for you to see it. <clears throat> and, uh, it's an hour and eight minutes, I believe it's, it's, it's a little more than an hour. And, uh, I, you know, I don't, I don't like when people say blood, they put their blood, sweat and tears in it, but I did put my sweat and tears in it, I suppose. Uh, no blood, but go check it out. Um, and, uh, I love you, man. Uh, crystalia.com. I'm just, I'm super happy it's out and, uh, I'll let the work speak for itself. So without, uh, further ado, welcome to the new app. Uh, app actually, let me say something before this, cause I'll just put the link, uh, under the thing on the comments. I'll be the pinned comment. So go click that link, which is crystalia.com anyway. Whatever. I'm excited about it. And um, I hope you like it. And now, without further ado, my, uh, my the next episode. Here we go. The next episode of Congratulations. Hey, it's, uh, it's a good day, dude. Yep, it's a good day. And I just realized I have a tag that's sticking in the side of my thing. That's so annoying. I, I like, I don't understand the, I guess you have to have a tag to know what size and all that shit. But like, don't have that. It pokes in the side, right? And you never notice until you're out and nobody has a scissors. It's all good. It's all good, my babies. Um, this is the whatever episode. It's 300 and something. I don't even know. I can't even believe how how many episodes we've had. And Calvin came in earlier, obviously, and messed with all the levels on the headphones because we couldn't hear anything. And then we noticed that all of them were turned down to a certain uh, <clears throat> level. And that was definitely that Calvin that did that. Because he comes in here and pushes the buttons. And my gosh, I only feel love about that. You know, if anyone else were to ever do that, I would get, I would get mad. But Calvin's really kind of opened me up and made me think about things in a different way. Dude, I tell you right now, this weekend, this this weekend that we just had, the past weekend, <clears throat> was, dude, so I was a little sad on like Thursday, I think. You know, some days you just wake up and you're like, okay. And the whole day you just, all right, okay. 
I guess I'll go to bed and, and see what happens tomorrow. The next day, wake up and you're like, all right. Oh, okay. You know? Um, the weekend was just bonkers connected, bonkers good, great mood, good attitude. And I'm just like, dude, what? Is this what it's going to be like today? Not bad. Now it's Monday right now. And I'm just like, where's the bad mood coming? Now I'll let you in on a little secret, dude. I've been taking citalopram for 17 years. Okay. I didn't know this, but apparently what my psychiatrist said, not my therapist, not my psychologist, my psychiatrist. I got so many. <laughs> ah, it's hard to deal with things. She said that they have a, she said, sorry to use this term, but a poop out date. Now, I don't know what it is, but I love learning about poop. So what is that? She says, there is a time limit on these SSRIs, on this medications. I didn't know that. And I probably, I'm well past the poop out date. I'm well pa past the, the medicine going kaputs, okay? And I'll tell you why I think that, because I switched. I went to do a little bit of a switch on the medication. Now, do I wake up anxious sometimes because of it? I think yes. Is it because the therapist, is it because the psychologist said maybe it would happen, and maybe it's psychosomatic and she shouldn't have mentioned it? Yes, it could be, right? But it's happening. I wake up a little bit anxious, and it's all good, okay? And then... I get really good as the day progresses on Thursday, have a little bit of a sad day. And then Friday and Saturday and Sunday, super connected. Now, did I start with 10 milligrams of Prozac? Yeah, he did. And then a week later, did he go to 20 milligrams of Prozac? Yeah, he did. And then a week later, did he go to 30 milligrams of Prozac? Yeah, secrets out. He did. Okay. And while he was doing it, what was he weaning off of his stalibram? Yeah, he was. Okay. And was it 40 milligrams of citalopram? Yeah, it was. And then was it 30? It was. And then was it 20? Yeah, it was. And now what is that? 10. So now we're doing 30 and 10. And I'm just like, oh, all right. I need to make that louder. And and it's just like, may is this what life is like? Because I'll tell you what. No buzz, no nothing, right? Look, I've taken a Vyvanse before. I know what it feels like. It feels like you do a Rella Coke, all right? Because it's basically Ritalin, which is basically Coke, all right? Yeah, can I pay attention when I did it? Oh, yeah. But when I took Vyvanse before, I'm like, remember when I took it when I went on the boat? There was an episode where I talked about how I went on a boat. I took a Vyvanse because I thought that maybe... I was going to have a rough time being on a boat with a bunch of people because I didn't want to be on a... Uh, first of all, I didn't want to be on a boat. Second of all, didn't want to be with a bunch of people. And we were going to marry the two. Oh, God. So I took a Vyvanse, and I was the life of the... I was the lot. And when I say I was the life, I mean I was the life of the party, okay? So I know what that feels like. It feels like you do a rail of Coke, okay? All right? Now, I don't know what Coke smells, smells like, feels like, but I know what Vyvanse feels like. And I did, it felt like I did a rail of Coke, okay? Which is what I think what Coke is, but whatever. Anyway, I don't feel like that. I feel like my intrusive thoughts are still there, but they didn't matter that much, you know? Like, I still think about, you know, if I walk down this alleyway, maybe later on I'll get cancer, but I go like this, whatever. Maybe it won't be for a long time. I go like this. There's an alleyway. If I walk down here, ah, maybe my mom will get throat cancer. Ah, she'll be all right. So I'm just like, all right. So maybe I've been living wrong for like five years with the, I don't know when the, the uh, citalopram pooped out. And look, this is not, a, this is a health and wellness podcast, but this is not a medical podcast. I'm not trying to be like, yo, you guys should take Prozac. Yo, you guys should take, you know, think, but think about your SSRIs, man. If you've been doing that shit for 15 years, woof, you might be in your poop out date. And I hope that this right, I, I was saying it to my therapist. I was saying it to my couple therapist. I got so many. <laughs> I have so many therapists. So I was saying it to my, my couple therapist. Oh, God, I have so many, dude. <laughs> and um, 
and I was telling her, and I was like, I really hope it's a pro Prozac. And she's like, well, you know, maybe it is, but don't worry if it's not. We'll get there. And I go, all right, you know. And then she was like, look in your wife's eyes and tell her how you feel. And I was just like, oh, anytime you got to do that in couples therapy, if you're in couples therapy, look, couples therapy is great because you know what? That whole book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Ikea, whatever the hell it is. Um, like, it's unbelievable how much it, it, it's hard to be on the same page uh, with anyone now. Take into account a woman, right? If you're a man. If you're a woman, then a man, right? So therapy, couple therapy is good. I do it. Now, do I want to? Do I go like this? Oh, every single time we got to go do it? I, yeah. Now, afterwards, do I feel better? Half the time. Half the time I feel worse. Like, but then I start to feel better, I guess. So what happens is therapy's fine. When I'm talking to the therapist, cool. Sitting next to my wife, all good. But dude, when I got a fucking turn, when she says, why don't you now look at Kristen, look in her eyes, and I go, this is exactly what I don't want to be doing, dude. I love looking in her eyes, but I don't want to be like looking in her eyes and have her looking in mine and be talking. About, that, that, all, that step is fine. The looking in her eyes is fine. The her looking in my eyes are, are good. Good. Great. Love that. Let's stop it right there. Because after that, the me talking about my feelings part. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you. So, Chris, why don't you look in her eyes and tell her how that makes you feel as a man? <laughs> no, thank you. But you got to do it because you're there, right? The shit costs whatever it costs. I don't know. They just charge me every fucking month. And um, I did it. And she's like, doesn't that feel nice? And I'm like, I guess, dude, but it's so fucking uncomfortable, man. You know? You know? Ugh. Like, dude, I was watching Ice Age earlier. And, like, the fucking woolly mammoth was, like, took the spear from the caveman guy. And he was going to stab him and shit. And then, the, and then they had the kid on the top of the woolly mammoth. And was like, look, here's your kid. And they thought they were never going to see each other again. But now they are, and now the kids walk in, and the dad wasn't even there, but the animals taught them to walk, and so it's like, all right. But then they play the music, and I'm like, oh, fuck, man. Like, that really makes me, if I let it, feel. If I let it, I can feel very, very deeply about that. But, dude, I don't let it, do I? No, because it's fucking Ice Age, dude. Because I'm not going to let my feelings pour out of me looking at a fucking CGI woolly mammoth. Right? But then I'm like, man, is that a problem? Like, it feels so uncomfortable sometimes when you listen to certain... Look, I know I talk about how I don't like music. Sometimes, look, I heard a song that I used to hear in high school, and it was too much for me, dude. And I go like this, ooh, maybe it's nice, but I'm not there yet. And I know I'm still really young, 43, but like, dude, it was like really fucking me up. And I can't really listen. To Something's blocked off. Whatever, dude. Uh, you know, I'm glad you're with me. Thank you for listening because who knows where I would be without you guys and without therapy and without... I think probably my life would be roughly the same, except, for, well, I think without therapy, I'd probably be fucking underground. Um, so, uh, but whatever, dude, I keep it cool at the gym. I was at the gym and I was killing it. Okay. As I do some, f some guy comes up to me and says, Hey man, what's the progression? How did you get to where you get to? Uh, with that exercise, because what I was doing is I was going down on one leg, single leg, touching my other knee to the ground and rising back up. Now, that's very hard to do. It has a lot to do with balance. And I was doing it with 40 pound weights. Oh, God damn it, dude. But I was, though, right? No lie. No cap. Stop the cap. Don't we have that? Somewhere, right? Stop the cap. No. Oh. Stop the cap. So, uh, 
Yeah, dude. No, I was I was legitimately going down on one leg, touching my other knee to the ground, holding forty pounds. Stop the cap. And um, and the guy comes up and he says, "Like, dude, can I ask you what's the progression? Like, what's it like to get to there?" And I said, "Well, you start with no, no, no weight." And he was like, well, that's interesting because it must make it a little bit harder, but then you can put this in. And I tell him all about it. And I goes like, I walk out. I'm like, dude, guess what? That dude asked me about uh, uh, advice. Hey, dude, the icing on the cake. He was fit. Stop the cap. Dude, he was fit. Okay. So I go, and then I look at him and he's fit and that's my fucking confidence, man. Just growing up like I took a mushroom and I'm wearing fucking red overalls. Just loving it, man. You know? And I go and I text. I immediately text my wife and our friend together in a group text. Dude, fit guy really. A fit guy asked me for advice. And they go, oh my gosh. Okay. Guess what, dude? The next day I'm working out. Same dude comes up to me. Ask me about for more advice. And then I'm talking to him and I realize, oh, He's just kind of a fucking crazy guy. Oh, he's talk because he's talking to everybody. So I go, oh fuck. He's not talking because he wants advice. He's talking because he's running from something. Oh, for fuck's sake, dude. But he was fit, dude. And I'm gonna hold on to that, man. I'm gonna hold on to that because it made me feel so good. Um I don't know. Oh yeah, I got this fucking tattoo, dude. Added to it. My mommy hates it, but dude, it's fine. Cause I'm fucking so yatted up. I really am. Oh, he's got a throat piece. He's got a bit of a throat piece. I mean, it adds to the collection of it under his chest, uh, on his chest, but he's got a bit of a throat piece. Hey, nothing hurt as much as the ribs. Did the throat piece hurt? Hey, Chris, did the throat piece hurt? Hey, Chris, did the throat piece hurt? Hey, Chris, did the throat piece hurt? <laughs> Yeah, it did, but not as much as the fucking uh, ribs. Dude, uh, I don't care, man. You know how? You know what, dude? You know what they say? Tattoos. I, I, I listen. I read this thing. I know exactly what a tattoo feels like. It feels like a cat is scratching you over and over and over again. Read that somewhere. Can't stop thinking about it. Maybe, this, maybe the project isn't working all that well. But um, it is what it is, man. And I honestly... My, um, my contacts have been my contacts have been fucked up ever since we've been we had a couple of because I had to focus on the computer. Uh, but we had our Halloween co- uh, party. We had our Halloween party. I'm sorry if you weren't invited. I can't remember all of my friends. You know, that's what I hate about inviting. I don't. I'm supposed to remember all my friends. My wife is like, "Who do you do you want to invite? Who do you want to invite?" And I'm like. Just, you know who. And she's like, yeah, but... And then throughout, like, the three weeks leading to the party, what about... And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then I say, uh, a few days before party, how many people are coming? And she said, I like 60. And I go, oh, for fuck's sake, dude. 60? I got to hide all my shit. Right? I got to put a fucking bunch of stuff in the safe. 60 people? Do you know what that means? There's going to be at least... Seven people, I I don't know who they are. I don't have a clue. Dude, there were... There were actually six people. I had no idea who they were. Oh, dude. How infuriating fucking blood red mad would this make you? Well, first of all, I we I put Calvin to bed in the middle of the party. And I had to lay with him until he fell asleep because it was loud. And I did do that because I'm a good dad. And I love doing it. And I walked out. As soon as I walked out, I bump into Clark Kent with a Superman... Like, he's got the glasses on, open shirt, Superman. I go like this. I've never seen this person in my life, okay? I walk downstairs. He starts, then I see him again. He starts talking to me. I don't know who I'm talking to. My wife goes, and I say, who's that? She says, oh, that's my friend's uh, husband. I said, who's your friend? She said, my friend. I know her from Instagram. I go, we don't even know the friend. Good thing I hit all my shit I don't need a man who's faster than the speed of fucking, uh, faster than a locomotive, stealing my, you know what I mean? And so, they're very sweet though. Actually, I want to be their friends. They're very sweet. But, so this is the blood red mad part. David Sullivan, dude, fathead, goes like this. 
Hey, man, how 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 lit are you trying to get this party? Because I got some friends that could come by. And I and I but I don't even know. He tech. Here's the thing. He didn't text me that he texted my wife that. And he knows I would have just went fucking. I would have sent him that emoji, that red circle with the line through it or that red X. Just I would have it would have been that. Shoo. Dude, I walk by the island. I see David's text from my wife's phone. It's open, by the way. Okay. And it says, how lit are you trying to get? I got friends that could come to the party too. And my wife says, bring them. And I, so I'm like, oh, this motherfucker's trying to backdoor it, dude. He's trying to fucking Hollywood agent it. He's trying to get, cause he knows I'll say no. He knows I'll be like, no, I don't want these motherfuckers. You know, she already said yes. So now I'm pissed. All right. But it's cool because I was bonkers connected this weekend and I'm all good. But so he comes over. Okay. We're chilling. I put Calvin to bed. Now it's 11. I come out of the, the fucking uh, room. It's 11. Bump into Clark Kent. We're chilling for a bit. I go, hey, where's David? My wife says, I don't know. David's not there anymore. And then four people show up at my house. And my wife says, who are they? And I say, I don't know. So I'm like, great. We're getting robbed. Okay. And then Brent finally is like, Brent Morin is like, hey, what's up? And he, I'm like, you know who they? He's like, oh, these are David's friends. I'm like, oh, so David, these are the people that David invited? Dude, these are the people that David invited. And David already left, dude. David left and other people came that he invited. Bro, I lit him up on the text chain and go, I go, ooh, 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 ooh. He says, man, you said they could come. They, they showed up at 1230, dude. A tall guy with mushrooms came. He had mushrooms, dude. He gave people mushrooms. That's that's fine, dude. Do your shrooms. But like, dude, David, be here. He was just like a vampire, you know? I can't, dude. But I was too, I was, I was honestly, I was too, I was too happy. But like, it was just like so annoying, man. Hey, what's up? A guy. Hey, what's up? Don't, dude, if you go to a house, you don't know somebody, you don't say, hey, what's up? You go, hey, man, how you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm fucking whoever. I don't like being in other people's houses. I don't. It, it's like, it's not familiar to me. One time I, I was looking, because we were looking at, because we're building a house, so we were looking at, Houses that people, that people, uh, that c- contractors built. And he was like, the contractor took me to the house. This was a few months ago. Took me to someone's house that he built and they were home. I said, come on in. And they were so foreign that I don't even know what country they were from. It was some, it wasn't, it was just like, hello, how do you, how are they? And I'm just like, all right. We'll come around to wherever. Okay. And then the, the contractor's like, look at this. Look at this. Look at that. See, these are the attention to details that other contractors won't get. Look at that. Look at it. Lights, how they're all lined up. Look at that. And then this originally was like this. And I fucking made it like that. Just right there. But if you're going to have, you know, and I'm walking by and the lady's like, hello. And I'm, I'm just like, I, uh, Thank you for letting me, I, and I go, thank you for letting me, you know, come in and look at the house. And she goes like this. And I'm like, can we all just like chill a little bit? I don't need to be in this house. I could look at it. Show me pictures, bro. You hear those dogs? I'll tell you what. My dogs have been, went to a kennel. They went into a kennel, like uh, um, however many months ago when we went to it was in September, October, November uh, it's two months you still gotta do that by the way I fucking I, st- I always gotta do it. and um, they, they got kennel cough from there which is uh, you know they just go I have here so they go huh, 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 like so much and here's the deal kennel cough is something that you can keep catching I have four dogs so when one person when one of the dogs is getting over it the other dog gets it. 
They've had it for, for fucking since September, the beginning of September, two months. There's always a dog. One of my dogs is going, hur, 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 hur. that's how it ends. This is, this is the whole thing. The kennel cough. Hur, 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 hur. And my friends come over. They're like, is this fucking dog? Okay. And I'm like, it's fine, dude. He's fine. And like, you're not worried about it. I'm like, no, that that's more annoying than the fucking thing. And the big dog, Cooper, when he gets it, it's so loud. And we wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning. Oh, the whole <laughs> Nine times, dude. I love life. Life rips. I love life. I didn't put on deodorant today. But I'll tell you what, I don't usually need to, but sometimes, sometimes late at night, I'll fucking like put my arm around my wife and I'm like, are you eating a sandwich in here? And it's just because I didn't put deodorant on. <sighs> Buy Berg water drilled from icebergs on amazon.com. Go to my page if you want to purchase a 10 word ad or shout out holler dot baby slash crystalia. Um, Everyone keeps asking me this. Am I going to get a, a Drake for all the dogs jacket? Uh, and I'm looking at it right now. And the answer is no. You know? Pre, you can pre-order that. Just like my special. Go to chrisley.com. People really rock. Really rock. Drake merch. Like it's like Banana Republic. Like, not like, look, merch is merch. You go to a Lil Yachty show, you're wearing the thing that Lil is from Lil Yachty's show, and you know it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're like, I got this shirt on from the Lil Yachty show, and everyone's going to look, and they'll be like, oh, you're at the Lil Yachty show? And they go, yeah. Oh, you got that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever you look at merch, and you know the artist that the person's wearing for the merch, you go like this. Oh, oh, right? Dude, Drake? His merch, people wear it and they're like, I've been to Toronto, bro. People wear it and they're like, it's part of my outfit. That's so dorky. Because it's not, I mean, I guess it is its own brand, like October's very own. Wow, the headphones in the fucking tag. Uh, the headphones, you know? Uh uh, wow, too many words on the jacket, dude. What is it? A far game, faith, my later, fa truth. Oh, these are the, the track album. These are the album tracks, the tracks. I like that he did this, though. There's Oh, there's also uh, Grow or Die merch that's available, by the way. And it's sick, dude. I'm like Drake. Sick, in it? I'm not getting that jacket though. I got to. I, I live in L.A. I got. I, I got some. I got some cool jackets. But I don't need. I don't need to wear them. But I'm going to the East Coast, so maybe I will start wearing them. Flavor Flav sang the national oh, anthem. Say, can you see? Oh. Fergie's like finally. By the dawn. Why? He's not a singer, dude. Like, why don't you have my Uncle Vinny do it? He's just not. What so proudly we I mean, way better than I thought he'd be, honestly. At the twilight. I mean, doesn't know when the word ends. Wow. So I... And bright stars. Oh, kind of nailing it, honestly. The perilous fight. Oh, killed it. Dude, how about how the people who wrote this song, if they could flash forward and see how this guy's dressed singing this, they would just be like, you know what they go like? They go like this. They see him going, they go like this.
<laughs> For the rain. So bad. But we won. It's good when he gets to the lower register. He's good. We're so gallant. Doesn't know when the word is. Streaming. Wow, some of the uh, basketball players are laughing. What dicks, you know? Oh, oh, they didn't, by the way, they didn't fucking, the best part, I'm sure he ruined the Rockets' red glare part, right? Is that what, Rockets' red flare? What is it? I don't know. I'm I'm not patriotic. And the Rock, and, and the Rockets' red flare with bombs, with bombs bursting in air gave true to the night. But the fucking guys were still there. Oh, say. Does that star spangled banner yet? I, I, would, I get different with it. Banner yet. Well. Um. Shout out to Flavor Flav doing it though. I wanted um Dude, how crazy is it that Matt Matthew Perry died in the hot tub? That's so sad. He was so funny, man. I know he was battling an addiction, but I don't know if that had anything to do with it. I think he had a heart attack, they said. In the hot tub. And then drowned, which is wild. Um, heart goes out to him and his family and the friends cast, you know, because that's probably weird for them. Um, I never met him. God, he was like 54 or something. Imagine that. Imagine if fucking Brian Callinger died. That'd be so insane. Um, yeah, rest in peace. I guess Mike Pence dropped out. Dude, I can't believe Mike Pence was running, first of all. Hey, Mike Pence, you know, you're, you're going to lose a hundred percent. Everyone thinks you're a complete bitch, you know? Nobody, like, at all thinks you're good to do it. And everyone who might will like Trump better. You know? Mike Pence is the most regular looking man I've ever seen in my life. He couldn't look like he plays golf more. And it honestly, he was never going to be president. And he knows, man, why do people run for president when they just know they're not going to do They're not going to fucking do it. What is that thing? Remember when the porn star was running? It's like, hey. You're not going to win. You have balloon tits. You know? Like fucking probably Bill Nye ran or something. You know what I'm saying? Like there's always that one guy where it's like, oh, he ran? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. A comedian ran one time. It's like you're not going to do it. Why are you doing it? You're spending time on this and money? Mike Pence, dude. Remember when the fly landed on his head? And that was it for him? Dude, political... Po, how fucking shitty are politics? A fly can land on your head when you're giving an interview and you're done. You know? For real. Like, for real. You could just be like, so dope and be like, let me sit down for this interview. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do about taxes. And what it is, is, and you just keep talking about taxes and there's a fly just living on your head for a while. And then it goes, and you're, by the time you're done with the interview, they have a trillion memes and your political career is over, dude. You get out there and be like, I think that went pretty well. And they're like, a fly lived on your head for about 20 minutes. And the guy's like, great, I'm fucked. Ha <laughs> ha.
Do you need help getting up? No. Are you able to get up on your own? Yes. Okay. I want to leave out. I'm mad, Nick. Why are you mad? Because he keep, I just got out of jail today. This time, I would suggest opening the door. So, Dick. I'm 60. Wow, I'm Mary Catherine Gallagher. Sorry. Show me that you can stand up. I will. Uh, oh, dude. <laughs> I will. Dude, this woman is so drunk. Darla, can you just go inside, please? Darla. So that we can, we can roll out and you There's don't have to go over the There's nobody else here at the house to take care of you. I don't need nobody. Yeah. You just fell through a door. Normal people it's don't fall through door. a door. Yeah. You can't even... It's my door, she says. Dude, you can't even... Like, you... You're... It's so sad when no matter what you the other person says, it sounds dick because of the situation you're in, you know? Like, well, you just fell through a door. Like, that is what happened, and they're not even trying to be dick, but they're so dick because of the situation because they have to Yeah, be. it's your door. What is I'm your mad. Door? You fell through it. No, not out of anger. You fell through it. Normal people don't fall through doors. Unbelievable, dude. The beginning of it, dude. Look at He broke out my window. Which one? So slow. <laughs> The, I mean, it happened, dude, it happened so slow. The whole fall happened during the pause of the last fucking time in that Billy Joel song where he pauses and goes, in the middle of the night, that last pause is so long. That's how long it took for her to fall out of the door and into the shrubs, dude. To the valley of sand, through the middle of the night, I'm going to be looking for something. And then, so I'm taking I lost. Well, nobody, oh, and then, whoom, and then she go, and then it, dude, man, I'm mad in the middle of the night, <laughs> dude, that's so, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, let's watch it again here, which one, look, Man, look, I'm so mad. Dude, somebody please make a fucking thing of the... I guarantee that's... As, that's that is so long that that took... That's so slow that it could have happened before the last pause in the, in the middle of the night song by Billy Joel. The whole fall could happen in that last pause. That's how long it took. <laughs> somebody fucking edit that together, please. <laughs> Wow, I used to love that song. And when it did that big pause, when I was like 12, I was like, fuck yeah, that's so awesome. No, I was probably like nine. Man, I'm so mad. Am I making sense? Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, you do. Which one? Kiss in the screen. Right, the way he says, are you okay, ma'am? Like it's Charles Grodin. Are you okay, ma'am? The fire department. Do you need help getting up? Why the fire department, dude? You know? Should I call Arby's for you, ma'am? Do you need some steak sandwiches? No? Okay. We fell through a door. Normal people don't fall through a door. Would you like some... Would you like a bazooki from BJ's? No? Okay. Normal people don't fall through a door. Okay. Oh, man. Man, I'm so mad, she says. Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith Locksmith, Sydney, Australia, get secured, babies. 0410194208. Go to my page if you want to purchase a 10 word ad or shout out. Holler.baby slash Chris Dude, I love this app. Um, Kodak Black and 21 Savage have fucking beef. Dude, the day has come. I hate that they have beef. They're both really great guys, and it sucks that they're having beef, right? Let's see what they have to say. Do we have to say future? Twenty-one savage. 
Cause, cause 21 used to be, used to be straight. That's I'm true. We were vibing on the SG twice type shit. I'm saying, I'm like, mm-hmm. we supposed to be sniper game, slaughter game, slaughter game, sniper game, whatever the fuck, yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, but I ain't gonna lie, I, I remember a point in time, like, the shit was fucked up about me, like, on some shit, like, let's shoot the last stuff, and now I'm doing shit like that, like, bro, stay on, like, all that good shit, all that other shit. Yeah. And then, I don't, I don't know, like, I'm saying, Drake, mm-hmm. Drake just got a certain, like, a little effect that he do to motherfuckers and shit. Mm. Like after that album, they did it together and shit like that. It was just like, hey, hey, dude, hey, dude, come on, hey, hey, man, try a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? Sup with consonants. You got those? Hey, look, 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 we, what we gonna do? We talking about it, like, man. man so that, that, look, that, let's try it. Remember, so try it, try it. We did, we did. Drake, Drake, don't wanna kind of put it all together, man. Hey, guy, dude. Did you ever have parents? Did you have teachers? Did you ever have someone? Like, if I'm friends with somebody like that, I go like this. Oh my God, buddy. L- 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 you got it. You got it. You have to. You have to start talking better. You know what I'm talking about? Like, h- who are the people in his lot? They're just going like this. Yeah. Oh. Oh. All of a sudden, motherfuckers just felt like I'm saying they ain't. All of a sudden, motherfucker felt like they ain't. Oh, don't that pussy ass shit like that is some shit like you made this shit like you like you vocalize it for real, for real on the ground and on, yeah, on the internet like you ain't never vibing like that. Just waking up. I mean, like, oh no shit. And then the fucking the logo on that. Like, that's what he said. Hey, this is beef. Imagine hearing that and going like this. Oh, that motherfucker crossed the line. <laughs> uh, but in my listen, when you're talking about man, that's what it is. We've got an exclusive with uh, Kodak Black. Hey, who? Are you going to say future old? 21 Savage. Here we go. We got an exclusive interview with Kodak Black. Let's play a clip of uh, some of the uh, some of the stuff that he had to say. Kind of incendiary when it comes to the, the rap game. Why don't you have a look? Because 21 used to be straight. I said we were vibing on the SG twice type shit. I'm saying, like, we're supposed to be sniper game, slaughter game, slaughter game, sniper game, whatever. Okay, you know? Imagine my dad listening to that. So here's 21 Savage's response, which should just be what? His response is just 21 Savage just goes, what? But his response here. Because I did a goddamn album. After I did an album with Drake, I switched up. Come on, bro. First of all. Falling asleep. Falling asleep. Fuck asleep. Sweet. What 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 post to switch? Like what post to change? Like Dude, these two guys. One just woke up and the other one's falling asleep. Dude, unbelievable. Dude. I ain't grow up with you, nigga. I don't know you like that. Like you rap, I rap. I always supported you and shit. Watch. I fucked it with your movement. Like I fucked it with you with, with what you had on. What you had going on, right? Mm-hmm. I'm switched up. You get in your feelings, cause I'm on Clubhouse, and they ask me, I can't even believe I'm doing this. Dude, you should never have if you have if you have beef with somebody, never say Clubhouse. <laughs> you know? Hey, children. You know what I'm saying? Meet me at my treehouse, dog. Out for dinner if you're allowed. Outside. It get dark early, remember? Weak ass shit. On motherfucking live. You, I'm on Clubhouse. That's it, you know? Oh, wait, one more. Here, more. All you had to do was say, future. Crying. I, I, I picked future over Savage. You going to this deep ass motherfucking explanation. Could God found one. 
and stab it, got down. Oh. Did the album Crying. with Drake, and you start acting funny. Crying. How the, what the f what changed? Why are they bleeping out the bad words we can't tell? Because I said I felt like I'd beat everybody who was on the freshman cover. I'm supposed to feel like that, nigga. I ain't no bitch. I ain't finna say no nothing, nigga. One thing I ain't finna ever do in my life is say a nigga can beat me in a fight. Uh, beat me at nothing. I'm not saying a nigga. I don't give a damn. They put me in the ring with Shaquille O'Neal. They... What? Okay. Well, there you have it. The exclusive interview. <clears throat> Hopefully they f they iron out this beef, man. I can't I can't have them be saying much of that, you know? Oh, wow, dude. To oh, God. Bro, Gavin Newsom. Twirling around doing that thing. Just fucking, just taking a China kid to town, dude. And then spanking him for some reason. It's kind of, kind of sweet, actually. Kind of sweet. Then people are because they hate him. They think like, oh, you know, fuck this guy. But it's totally normal. normal. Look, look, look. He, he kind of has some moves, dude. But then he tripped. Yeah, he's wearing loafers, you know. Oh, dude. Oh. Okay. So bitch, you know. So bitch. Don't stop playing basketball when you're 40, at least by then. Because unless you're doing unless honestly you're you're playing, you know. No, cuz even then you should be retired. <clears throat> you know. But uh knew some <clears throat> fucking ate shit and took that China kid out. Um Oh, wait, one more here. RNs in Connecticut, we want you. www.promedstaffct.com. Go to my page if you want to purchase a 10 word ad or shout out. Holla dot baby slash crystal. Yeah. Do it. Good. Oh, here we go. Oh, is this a. This is an ad. Hold on. Here we go. A possible case of illegal dumping in the middle of the street made one neighbor very upset, and he ended up chasing the person responsible on Detroit's east side. With no luck and a big mess on his hand, he called us for help. With Tara Edwards tells us what happened no after luck he reached and a big mess on his news. hand. We first introduced you to Jeff Brown during 7 Action News at 5. Most regular name. He witnessed a man boldly dumping large chunks of wood from a flatbed. Oh my. Along Kelsch on Detroit's East Side Tuesday in broad daylight. Look at all these trees. Brown says when he confronted the guy, the man took off. Brown tells us he jumped into action, got into his car, and tracked down the truck. He got I mean, a license dude, the plate. worst fucking John Wick. The worst equalizer. Number and called police. But the mess remained on the street, and no one had been caught. Taking action for Brown, we did some digging and found Ehor Stikevich, a Warren resident. Ehor Stikevich? Are you fucking shitting me? Ehor Stikevich? Oh, I wish I knew about that name before my kids were born. I would have named him fucking Ehor Stalia. What is it? The driveway. Ehor. Wood. Ehor. What? Stikevich claims he Stikevich. hit the curb and the debris accidentally fell out. It's a little illegal to leave the wood in the street, so what I'm asking is... I'm going... I mean, you don't have to ask me, and I don't take no orders from no woman, by the way. Ah! E horse hey, By the way, uh, she, I she goes, I... That was great. She goes, I... It's a little illegal to leave the wood in the street, so what I'm asking is... I'm going... The, I mean, the worst... Sunglasses known to man, dude. Arnets, you know? Arnays or whatever. You don't have to ask me, and I don't take no orders from no woman, by the way. By the way, I don't take no orders from no women. Stikevich says he was planning to go back and clean up the wood, but only had one dollar. But then a woman asked him to, so he's leaving it there. Worth of gas. So you were saying that you were going back to clean up well, the wood. E-horse the bevich, dude! Yes. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm Mr. Cleanup. I'm not Mr. Clean. I'm Mr. Clean Up. Well, uh, fucking vaudeville. <laughs> I mean, went on the tiptoes to say that that last part. I'm Mr. Clean Up. But he said and that I live in Warren, and I'm cleaning up Detroit. Go figure that one out. But somebody said that they tried to yell at you to come back, and you kept going. And it then... must have been a woman, and I don't listen to women yelling. I tell them to shut up. Well. <laughs> 
the dude Sadeeper. His wife left him eight months ago. Well, he was quite offensive with his answers. Dukovich maintains the biggest he truck, just wants dude, to help his, people remove chunks of wood I mean, just from so their many logs on his front lawn. Property. I lift them all by myself with nobody else's help. Old guys, disabled guys, black guys, white guys, Polish guys, Ukrainian guys, and guys from Mars also. Aliens? Guys from Mars also. Oh, okay. Oh, Mar uh, her. Oh, 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 okay. I okay. From, from Mars? From Mars. Yeah, that's where I'm from, Mars. And you police know? are investigating what exactly happened out here and whether Sakevich is responsible or whether he'll face... Dude, his, his, his wife said, I'm leaving you. And they got in a huge fight. And she's like, oh, get out. She's like, you're so fucking crazy. It's like you're from Mars. And like, nah, he can't get all over it. Any charges on Detroit's east side, Tara Edwards, 7 Action News. Claims he hit a Dude. curb and the debris accidentally so fell out. Good. It's a little illegal to right leave here. the wood in the street. So what I'm asking is, I'm going. I mean, you don't have to ask me, and I don't take no orders from no woman. By the way, I, by the way, I don't take no orders from no women. Together, so many negatives. She was planning to go back and clean. Okay, I've been warned, and I'm cleaning up Detroit. Go figure that one out. But somebody said that they tried to yell at you to come back, and you kept going. And it then... must have been a woman, and I don't listen to women yelling. I tell them to shut up. Well, he was. The most fucking maladjusted man in the history of, of, of humans, you know? It was no woman that was no saying no. Nobody tells me no what to do. No woman. Go figure that one out. Wow, this guy's great. Wow, that guy's great. Uh... uh. That one's funny. I'm sending it to my friends. Um, I dressed up as a milkman in my Halloween party, and my wife dressed up for as a uh, '50s housewife, and it was cool. It was couples costume. People didn't really know it, dude. They thought I was being an ice cream man, which really fucking made me annoyed. And then I said to people, uh, why do people think I'm an ice cream man? And people said, well, you mean you could be an ice cream man? And I said, there's a cow on my hat. And they said, well, there's milk and ice cream. And I said, yeah, but that's not the fucking, that's not the thing, honestly. I'm a fucking milkman, obviously, dude. How crazy is it that people used to just deliver milk? People used to deliver milk. And also, what a racket. You don't even need milk. You know? You don't need milk. You certainly don't need it to be delivered. What a bullshit job. It's like a Will Smith movie. Like a, where a fucking, you know, he makes those movies about people with fake jobs. Like Hitch. Like what is that movie? Hitch. A, a guy who helps people find people? That's not a job. Dude. Certainly not from a guy. Some like housewife in, 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 in Maine would have that job. Not Will Smith, 38 when he shot it, you know? How about in the scene when they're like, come on, man, you going to help me get laid? And he's like, whoa, that is not what I do. It's like, all right, bro, you know? Dude, that movie fucking sucks. And I never even seen it. I just know that one scene. Um, But yeah, dude, what was I talking about? Uh, Oh, yeah. So I was a, a milkman, dude, all right? And it will be past Halloween when this comes out, but I will be Randall trick-or-treating with my son, who's going to be Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc., and Billy's going to be Sully. And my wife was going to be another person for the, for the, um, another person from the Monsters, Inc. However, um, she shipped it to the wrong address. So she, uh, who knows what she's going to be? She's going to be on her own thing. Skit Face Podcast. Two London boys create side-splitting comedic sketches. Go to my page if you want to purchase a 10-word ad. Uh, Holler.baby slash Crystalia. Dude. <sighs> Halloween's only cool if you have kids. I was thinking about this the other day. I saw a fucking guy dressed up 
like uh, for Halloween, walking around alone, like a man, like 40. And I'm just like, no, you know, like have kids, kids dress up and then also sluts beyond that. Nothing like if you are a lady and you want to hoe it up one year and be like a sexy army vet or whatever the fuck, you know, with like a G.I. Joe hat and your tits all out. Fine. Kids. Halloween is for kids and hoes. I, I saw a 40 year old man walking around dressed as like a vampire. And I'm just like. For what? Look, who's this for? If you're going to a party, fine. Fine, I guess. But also, don't have that elaborate of a costume. It's just, hurry up. If you have, if you're 40 and you're a dude and you're dressed up and you don't have kids, hurry up and splurt in a woman. That's all I'm saying, man. Because it's weird as shit you're dressing up. It is. And I stand by that, dude. And, you know, I like when people are happy and you be you ultimately, of course. But, dude, I'll say it again. Halloween is for kids and hoes. Really weird, dude. Like a 50-year-old man is just going to be a cowboy one day out of the year. (laughs) Hey, nut in a woman. Uh, I'm not in a Halloween, although my wife went all out with the decorations and I was like, okay, cool. She went all out with the decorations and that's great. And then it's like, I'm now I'm keeping my tabs on the fucking Christmas decorations. Cause if that shit goes bonkers, she's like, I really will go all out for one holiday a year. Dude, mark my words. We'll see. We'll see if we go bonkers for Christmas. We'll see, dude. She says, Oh, dude, she had the nerve to say today, maybe I'll just put up one Christmas tree this year. Dude, I go, have you ever met yourself? We've got four trees in the garage. What are you just going to leave them there? She says, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll go simple. Hey, dude, have you ever met yourself? Hey, look in the mirror. Extend your hand. Shake it. That's you. Say nice to meet you. Now, decorate too much because that's what happens. I couldn't even, I couldn't even believe she said it, but she really kills it, man. I mean, the fucking stuff looked amazing. So go fuck yourself. Right. Uh, last one, Lonely design co illustration and design custom work, limited drops. Go to my page. If you want to purchase a 10 word ad or shout out holler dot baby slash crystalia dude. Um, thanks for rock with me. That new ads thing is the shit. I don't have ads, and that's how I'm doing them from now on. Um, Yeah, I appreciate you guys listening. And I will tell you this, dude. um, My special is out. So go below and click the link and go get it. Um, I am really proud of it. And I'm really excited for you to watch it and support. And don't steal it, dude. You know? I mean, I know there's always ways to get around it, but it's like... I worked fucking hard on that shit. So, get it, you know. Uh, Thanks a lot, and I appreciate you. Uh, And that's it for YouTube. If you want to listen to the rest of the episode, the uncut episode, the uh, ad-free episode, go to uh, patreon.com slash crystalia. That's how you get that. And you can also listen to, we have one episode uh, extra a month that for Patreon, you can go get it over there. Um, and there's so many of them now. If you want to go listen to them, you pay six bucks. Just listen to all 30 or 40 of them right now that we have in the past however many months. We've been. Appreciate you guys. Thanks a lot.